I'm going to go through access control in depth. Um, mainly what I want to do here is kind of focus a little bit more on access control and talk about this. And then ultimately I'm going to segue into kind of RFID implementation and then talk about, you know, the, the foundation that has to be built in order to get to the point where cashless becomes something that's practical for a festival. So access control systems. So obviously we have kind of these four major areas to think about. Um, patron ticketing, which is, you know, there's tons of ticketing companies that sell tickets. It's almost come almost like a commodity uh, in this particular context. So, you know, there's all these different options for ticketing. It, you, you can use a bunch of different platforms, but ultimately uh, when you start talking about all four of these together, this is where you really start trying to, you know, build a vision for having everything consolidated. And this is kind of where we want to focus on that. So we got patron ticketing, back of the house ticketing, which is more, more your guest list. And it might, if you are doing some charging on your back of the house, you want to get all that into, into the process so you can consolidate your, your ticket counts from your, your front of the house sales, the back of the house sales and things like that. Obviously it has impacts on some site logistics. It can have impacts on decisions being made about um, parking plans or, maybe you're looking at some safety related issues because of this. So having this all consolidated in one place where you get it in real time is great. Uh, production credentialing, which, you know, all your staff volunteer and level credentialing sponsors, all that stuff. But obviously those numbers are important. So getting the, getting all that into one access control system is great. So you can see those is kind of all these numbers globally. And then comp ticket processing, which again plays in with we kind, of, kind of use that example from both maybe from volunteer programs or from sponsorship level activities. Or it could even be with food vendors and things like that. You have your comp ticketing processing in one system. So this is just kind of a simple chart of, you know, RFID versus non-RFID. And this is purely kind of focusing on the ticketing side of it. Uh, on the left side, we're talking about, you know, kind of the basic elements. Um, not to say that ticketing, if you're not doing RFID, you can't have a great process with ticketing. But this is kind of a comparison of RFID versus uh, non so basically, obviously, we're doing ticketing on both sides. Uh, Non-RFID ticketing tends to be slower on entrancing. Um, obviously, if you're scanning and doing tears, or if you're scanning and doing a wristband exchange, that's going to be really slow. Uh, obviously, it's going to be slower than people who are being fulfilled wristbands up front. Uh, patron troubleshooting is definitely more difficult. Um, if someone comes up and says, I lost my tickets, and we look them up in the system, and then we see that those tickets have already been scanned in, a lot of times, you you know, if you're sitting in that situation from a customer service perspective, you can't cancel the tickets that are already scanned in. If they were, especially if it was a ticket to a wristband exchange, those people who ever gotten those tickets and, and managed to get those, however they did it, uh, there's very little we can do about that once they've already been processed. So we have to then look at our patron, who we verified is our customer, and we know they paid us money. So what do we do in that situation? A lot of times, you have to make a you know a decision based on the circumstances that you're hearing from that person and, and probably give them, you might give them two more tickets, but then, you know, the festival lost hundreds or sometimes could be a couple of thousand dollars worth of revenue because of that problem. So that's obviously an issue. Um, roughly half of ticket holders are not known. So it's kind of the basic rule of, you know, the average tickets per order is two. So if, um, you know, when, with, with traditional, with traditional tickets systems, we only know about half our customers more uh, directly. And there are, you know, some festivals I've seen have done programs to try to get people to like interact and get their registration, but obviously it's very manual and it's, you know, it's not extremely, you know, it's not extremely effective. So that's one, that's kind of your basic problems with, with that comparison. Obviously on the other side with RFID ticketing, we can now with RFID, it's really uh, pretty easy to start doing social media level uh, integrations. There's going to be, there's tons of upside with sponsors, um, be able to like work with them, maybe raise more money. Obviously you can do larger scale programs, um, you know, with like maybe integration with Facebook or Twitter and how they interact with different areas of the festival. There could be that, you know, we're, we'll be providing some scanners that, that we can provide to sponsors so that when people in those activation areas, they can just tap the wristband and then they can start you know, integrating that, that patron into their, into their activation area or their other experience they've built for them. And they don't have to put, you know, they don't have to spend any time like, you know, let me get your name and email address, that kind of stuff. So it lets them just tap them and then move them straight into the experience. So that's that's a really awesome, um, you know, advantage of the technology just from a, from a social media and a sponsorship integration. Obviously, you know, you get a, we've seen with the festivals that ha, that so far the last two three years have been doing our wristband registrations. Um, we've seen several of the festivals I've talked to have said their pre-festival registration is about 90%. So it's anywhere from 80 to 90%. So these, 
the patrons are definitely buying into the technology that they actually really like it. Um, and I've had cases where people are like, oh, we're a low tech festival. But when I'm, when I've interact with the, with the patrons on that level, I don't, I don't see that happening. I think people tend to accept this is, this is, this is cool stuff and they like it. So the good part is that, you know, you might have to have some registration kiosks and obviously if you're selling wristbands or RFID technology, you know, if you're, if you're not sold out and you're selling, you have a box office operation, um, there have to be some kind of registration process up there. Um, it, so you, you, you know, you have to look at different ways, but if you can get most of your people that bought in advance will pre register they show up, it really lessens the burden. And if you only have to, you know, deal with, uh, you know, a few thousand people registering on site, that's a lot less complicated than it, than it, than it would be. So, uh, again, granular interaction with festival areas. So this is kind of speaking to the fact that we can do all kinds of different things. Like people go and go, go to the, the Toyota photo booth, you know, uh, they have the Toyota has this Prius photo booth that I've seen a lot of festivals. So have people tap their wristband and, you know, obviously they're, we're working with some companies or we've been talking to some companies that are interacting with those sponsors to so be able to have RFID be an immersive part of that whole experience where you tap the wristband and that activates the camera and kicks out your slides. This is the future of this technology when it comes to things like that. So, and there'll be other areas um, that will play into this that are more festival controlled, maybe not sponsor related, but there's, you know, we just, I think a lot of this is, is being creative and figuring out what, what would be fun to do and what would work and then how to get the technology in place for it. But obviously there's a lot of growth in that area with RFID. Obviously the, the patron experience is much improved. I mean, any festival that does access control, if you have gates, especially if you're car camping or you've got, you know, you've got a large volume of people, if you get your wristband in the mail and you show up at the festival and you can, you can put it on yourself or you're, it's being applied when you get there, you're just walking straight up and you can just probably flow straight through into the gate. Uh, obviously people get in a lot faster. Um, if they lose their wristband, we can deactivate it and give them another one if that happens. Uh, and we don't have to worry about did someone steal it or did they give it away and they're lying to us or, they never got it in the mail or the shipping thing didn't happen. There's all these different problems. We don't really have to worry about what happened. I mean, it's nice to collect that information, but in general, got your ID. I look at the system. I verify that person was the purchaser. Okay. I'm going to deactivate your four wristbands. Here's four more. Some festivals charge a wristband loss fee, maybe 20 bucks or something like that. It just depends on what your policy is. But in general, the ability to know that someone's your patron, they actually spent that money with you and you're able to service them quickly and get them into the festival. Obviously is a, is a great experience as well as interesting being better and faster and things like that. RFID provides side optimization. So be able to look at things like how many people are flowing through the gates at what times. Uh, if you're sitting there on Friday and you look at your gates and everyone's, you know, let's say you're, most of your, most of your, you're a four day festival and everyone's mostly on Thursday, you can kind of see what happens at your gates, which gates are more heavily uh, trafficked. Uh, do you see a lot more interesting and exiting? So be able, basically be able to analyze your, your, all your scanning and look at some maybe in the graph format, kind of analyze different things that are happening at your different scan locations and maybe making some changes to those areas based on what you're seeing happening so you can kind of create a little bit better experience. And there's, there's benefits to this too post-event. Go back and analyze this stuff as well and see where people kind of hang out, where they interact. You might make some plan. You might make some changes to your site plan. You may do some more creative. It just all depends on. But having the information obviously helps with that process. Um, Obviously, if you're doing wristband fulfillment, then there's no ticket to wristband exchange, that's, which is great. Uh, one of the big problems with ticket to wristband exchange is, is you got to audit your your attendance. So if you're giving someone 100 wristbands and they do barcode scanning and they're ripping stubs, you know, a lot of festivals I worked when I used to work at Bonnery for years, I ran the gates there and we had to deal with, you know, we bring a tenant back off the line and say, well, we expect you to have 100 stubs because we gave you hundred wristbands and they have 90 stubs and they don't have any wristbands left. So what happened to the 10 wristbands? So we have those kinds of problems. RFID eliminates a lot of that, especially with the, with the inability to, inter, you know, exchange, even if we gave them hundred wristbands and they scanned the 90 tickets and they lost 10 somehow, those 10 wristbands should not be active. There shouldn't be a way to activate those wristbands to be valuable, uh, to be valid at any scan point past that gate. So there's, there's a lot of benefits of this it takes a lot of pressure off the attendance. A lot of these, these mistakes sometimes are legitimately, um, innocent mistakes. Uh, sometimes it's not. So having a, a better system so that you don't have to worry about that as much and you can more focus on getting people in and out. That's obviously a great benefit. And obviously there's the kind of holy grail RFID, which is the increased revenue opportunities. I mean, obviously if you can, if you can get rid of tokens, you know, if you're own concessions and you want to get rid of tokens so people don't have to wait in line in one line to get a token, they go get in another line to get a beer. If they can just go straight to the line to get the beer and buy that because they've, they've banked some money on their wristband and they can do that from their phone when they're sitting in the camp. 
or whatever, or they can do it pre festival or they can go to a kiosk and do it, and they don't have to worry so much about standing in two lines. Those are the types of things that we need to look at, uh, as well as, you know, there's some, you know, with, with risk, with obviously with cashless, the other big advantage is that, you know, you don't have to worry about theft at all. I mean, pretty much people can give away stuff, but they can't give away stuff and take money. So there's all these different things that come into both increased revenue, both from removing graft and fraud, as well as increased sales and th increased throughput through those areas so things get done quicker and you can sell more product. So implementing RFID. Um, so there's, this is kind of a, a 30,000 foot view of all the different things. Obviously you can, you can drill down to some of these areas and get very granular and what all the work that goes into it, but I'll talk through all these different areas. And we'll talk through, and then I think Laura Kirby was asked a question about box office. I'll talk a bit about that too, because obviously with, and she's right, a lot of festivals don't sell out. Um, and I'm probably thinking that might be referencing the registration conversation I'm talking through. And I'll go back to that and come out in a little bit towards the end. Uh, patron registration, uh, links to wristband, one patron per wristband. So I'm, this is kind of talking about patron registration and what the benefits of it are. I was touched on this a little bit in a previous slide, but. Uh, obviously, during the registration process, uh, this is very important, uh, the ability for, you know, with Facebook and Twitter and the way that they interact, uh, you basically have to authorize, um, say, a particular media to be able to do things with Facebook. So the patron has to basically, um, they register their wristband, and it says log in, and they can have a thing, say, log in with Facebook or link to Facebook and link to Twitter. When they do that, they're authorizing, say, festivalwebsite.com to post likes or post things on the feed and obviously these things can be tailored based on what we want to do from a festival perspective as we interact back with uh, back with the festivals but obviously the registration process is great because it allows those alterations to happen pre-festival and they can also happen at registration kiosks on site as well but and obviously once once those things are in place then you can figure out how you want those integrations to work with the sponsors and or festival programs that you're maybe developing for your festival and again i'm making the same point about get 95% of your patron information instead of the average of 50%. And I don't know. The average of 50% is kind of a kind of a standard, but it could be that some people have higher or lower levels depending on your festival. Most of the ones I talk to, two to one, I mean, two, two orders to one or two tickets per order seems to be a pretty close number to where everyone's at, but it could be different for your events. Sorry, I'm looking at a couple questions here. So in-house ticket fulfillment. Um, for major ticketing companies? Yeah, that's a good question. I think we, um, at Vendini, I'll just kind of talk about this for a second, this kind of talks to implement RFID because fulfillment is a major part of this. Um, I think fulfillment tends to be, in my experience recently, fulfillment's hard. And, and it's it's not hard, it's not, it's not hard actually, it's just you have to be very thorough. You gotta take your time and do it right. I think um, depending on the way that we build relationships, we wanna really build our fulfillment process around Treating almost like a banking operation, we have to really take our time. We have to have good technology that's easy to use. We have to have a very good human process for doing fulfillment. Um, but if you make mistakes, you know, obviously the festivals gonna, you know, there could be some backlash to the festival. We worked with a festival this summer that uh, had a lot of problems fulfillment last year. Their ticketing company really failed them on that. They had about 500 orders that got messed up at that level. Now they sold, you know, they sold probably 5,000 orders, but a 10% failure rate was pretty bad. Uh, obviously. There was a lot of pushback on that, and um, I think you know we are building our fulfillment center from the ground up around the registration process and doing things right, and having maybe a secondary check as every order goes through uh, to be able to make sure that the wristbands in the box or what was supposed to be there. There, there are there is technology in the RFID platform to allow you to say, you know, if you have a pick barcode on the box and you scan it, it can read all the chips simultaneously in that box, and it can at least tell you, hey, there's something wrong in, in that particular package. So. We're looking at all those different things in terms of our development uh, process for fulfillment. We're definitely gonna make sure that's, uh, we're gonna do our best job on that as we can. Now obviously there's, there's you know, the festival can choose to do it themselves or we can outsource it to a third party. Uh, those things are available and it just all depends, but fulfillment is a very important factor in all this. And if it's not done right, it can definitely cause a lot of problems. Uh, you know, and I think, you know, based on our relationships with our clients, we'll have to talk through who has to suffer the burdens of those. We typically at Vanini, if we're doing fulfillment, we're taking a customer service calls on that. Um, but we can, you know, we can talk more about that um, after the after the presentation. If you guys want to have a more direct conversation, we can talk about it more thoroughly. All right, I'm going to go to the next slide here. So access control considerations. Obviously, when you go to doing an RFID type event, 
Um, you're going to have, obviously, there's a big impact on network infrastructure. If you're, you know, obviously with gates, you're going to have to have more uh, dropped Ethernet. You're going to have to have a much stronger wireless solution. Uh, there's probably more places on site that have to have Internet access than if you're not doing RFID, depending on all the different levels of integration that you're doing with the technology. Uh, obviously, this affects operations. There has to be more time for training. Um, you know, what, there's just more technology that's going to be integrated with the site. So uh, there has to be maybe more cable runs done. We have to order more types of equipment and things like that have to be done. I think the site deployment planning becomes very important because obviously, you know, festivals, you know, things change. You, you make adjustments, things like that. So if you if you move the gates, you know, maybe you kind of redesign some of your areas and where entrance is going to happen. Then now all of a sudden you got to talk about, OK, what power do we need to move? Are we going to have to run more Ethernet? Is that completely, you know, now the IT plan has to change. So it impacts more people when you move stuff uh, with RFID than if it doesn't. So obviously, you just have to keep in mind that that your your site planning and your operations plans and your network infrastructure, all the stuff has to be in sync. Uh, and as these changes come up, everyone needs to be notified, and there needs to be kind of more of a project planning that gets managed into this because you know we've seen it, I've seen it time and time again where even this summer with festivals that are experienced, they come in and you know I was sitting at a festival in, in um, June that I was working on, and we were doing RFID catering. And uh, the, there was no, nobody, even though requested that those areas get uh, set up with certain types of internet connectivity that we need to guarantee that service. Uh, the IT, that, that information never got through management to the, uh, to the IT contractor. So we showed up on site, fortunately early, we found that we had no, no plan and there was no equipment for us to use. So we had to kind of last minute go through some emergency uh, processes to get that fixed uh, before we could get it operational. And obviously security integration. Obviously RFID affects security the most in terms of more of a direct training aspect. Um, yeah, so basically the, you know, make sure we can get those guards trained. I think the problem here is that it, we need to train them, but I think the, the challenge that I'm seeing from really more from the site side of things is that we need to make the technology easier to use. If the, if the scans are complicated, if they log into them multiple times, these guys don't need to use your username and passwords. They just tap their wristband. And that activates the scanner and it should be that simple and they get a red or green screen. So it's not that these guys aren't that some of these guys aren't sophisticated. It's just the fact that there's so many of them. We've got sometimes three to four hundred security guards out there. Uh, the management team is already really busy just trying to manage scheduling and make people make people are doing their jobs and doing the audits. So it's we just don't want to add a lot of burden to this. But obviously, uh, when you're planning your, um, your RFID your architecture, thinking about the impact on your security teams. Uh, is very important. We want to make sure that we make that as simple as possible so they can uh, actually focus on their jobs and not not have to deal with a lot of problems with the technology itself. So other things like scanning considerations, um, you know, basically what I'm talking about there is just kind of, again, this goes back to a little bit of training, but kind of thinking through um, training people on how to really use the scanners, uh, make sure they trust the technology. I think one of the challenges I've seen the last few years with, with uh, RFID and especially around security guards and the security companies that manage these people, um, they they don't entirely trust the technology. They, they had a lot of cases where the scanner doesn't work. Or I, I keep tapping these wristbands. So I think buying quality chips, working with manufacturers that we can trust. I've worked a couple of festivals, ordered some stuff from in China, and we had a lot of problems with the chips. Just you know, normal readers couldn't pick them up, and or you'd have to tap the thing five or six times to get to read the chip. So I think the quality of the of the technology and it's getting pretty inexpensive. Like you can get RFID wristband, cloth wristbands now for about 70 cents in, in decent quantities from a couple of different manufacturers and the prices will continue to drop on those. But anyway, so, be, you know, kind of making sure that 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 we put together both the good wristbands and have the right technology that scanning works quickly. If you're if you're just taking a minute or two to scan every chip, obviously that's going to be a detriment. That's going to be bad. Uh, Real time scan reporting. I talked about this a bit earlier about kind of analyzing what's going on in different places. Um, I think other things are important too, like, you know, from a reactive standpoint, have knowing that, you know, if you're looking at your, your scan, if you got kind of a control panel, which we're built, we've built one into our system where we know that, that around our main stage, we've got six scanners at these different positions. If one of those hasn't synced up or hasn't, you know, checked in say in the last 30 seconds, do we, do we flag that, send someone out? Maybe the battery's too low, maybe the wireless is dropped, whatever. And obviously we want to make sure that we can kind of deploy people from the support team that can kind of run around. And they know where the problems are occurring in real time. 
Uh, Real-time scan reporting can help with that as well as being able to run analysis on where things are at. Another consideration is volumes. If you've got a if you've got a controlled area that's fenced in and you've worked with your fire marshal and you've got certain capacity limit issues that you need to work through, being able to kind of like know how many people are in that area at, at any exact moment because uh, you're doing you're doing in you're doing entrance and exit scanning for something like that. Um, being able to have those those things be able to report in real time is really valuable. Uh, box office credentialing areas. Uh, this kind of goes back to um, a lot of festivals don't sell out. So how do you how do you effectively manage wristbands? Obviously, you don't want to be in a situation where you have to go into your ticketing platform and sell two tickets and then print those off and scan those two tickets and activate a wristband. So we have to have a process where we can just sell two wristbands quickly at the box office. Obviously, um, you know, and, and, and same with credentialing areas. We want to be able to, you know, make sure that we're, we're activating the wristbands. We need to know if we're running low on those. I worked a couple of festivals this year where we had some unexpected requests from the artist side and they really they really pushed the limits of the amount of credentials that we had. So we were basically looking at it and saying we're probably we might run out of wristbands on Sunday on the artist side. So we might have to start cutting back on the guest list and there's people we might have approved for artists, maybe we're just dropping down the guests. So be able to kind of understand, you know, those levels as well. It's not just about effectively issuing stuff. Sometimes you're actually managing uh, those types of situations and you want to make sure that you're gonna be able to deal with it before it comes in problem. Uh, RF, RFID customer service, uh, obviously with, you've got your box office operation and all of the other things you do when you're doing normal ticketing, but now that you're an RFID, you're going to have to probably, there's some wristbands that have problems. People break them, they put them on too tight. If they're a one-way slip uh, class, then they might have somebody pull on it and all of a sudden it gets real tight and it's actually restricting on their wrist and it has to be cut off and replaced. So you're going to have to understand that you're probably going to put a few Maybe at the info booth and a couple other places within your within both on the GA side, maybe one, so maybe something behind, say, the main stage to deal with the artist side. It's, it depends on your infrastructure, but you're going to have to consider maybe uh, adding some additional people uh, and locations to deal with wristband customer service. And obviously, registration kiosks, um, you, you'll have to have some of these. Uh, we're currently looking at developing these into like iPads that get mounted on these nice little swivel bases. So having a simple process where I can tap my wristband on that device put in my first and last name, maybe I'm an email, or maybe I'm linking it to my Facebook profile. We want to be able to make sure that your, you know, registration kiosks need to happen. Probably wristband customer service locations that have these. Anywhere that you're having a box office operation, you're going to have these. Um, there might be a couple other places where you look at it. It all depends on what you want. But we, we're trying to develop this technology, and it, it's very easy to deploy using uh, fairly inexpensive devices. You know, iPad minis are pretty cheap, so in the scheme of things. So th those, those types of things that we're looking at there. This is just a nice little graphic of, you know, kind of, this was kind of looking at, this is kind of representing two separate, uh, like, interesting locations and just graphing them out. So I think, you know, we're going to have a lot of tabular data about what's going on in, this, in the RFID platform, but I think having these nice, clean, simple graphics, this is just a kind of an illustration of, you know, if you're looking at your real-time reporting or if you're looking at your scan data, you can look at it both in tabular format and as well as looking at more of a graph layout, which just kind of gives you more of a sense of what's going on. Um, at different levels based on time of day and the volume of patrons.